It's the Weekly Wrap with your host, broadcasting legend Bruce Wolf, and his trusty sidekick, comedian Tim Slagle. And now, without further ado, Bruce Wolf. Bruce Wolf, Tim Slagle on the Weekly Wrap, and it's time for our weekly opener where I guess what's behind and Tim, the background that he's going to use. And Tim, I'm going to guess this week it's Trump and DeSantis in a wrestling ring. And Trump has just hit DeSantis over the head with a folding chair. Am I right about that? Oh, you missed this one. It should have been more obvious. Let's take a look right now. The reveal. Um, Manhattan criminal court waiting for that, Trump. Ah, uh, yes. Is this uh, Mar- is Marjorie Taylor Greene uh, <laughs> coming in to arrest Alvin Bragg right now? Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's interesting. Um, there's so many crimes that uh, Trump has been accused of. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not going to pay attention to all this legal stuff that I'm not getting paid one dime for. I'm sorry. <laughs> but um, um, this one and, and, and as, as of this writing, you know, of uh, us, us, us taping this, Trump has not been arrested. Right. He hasn't. It uh, he it would seem it would you'll, seem you'll, you'll that take a look uh, at the wire. It would seem that the last, uh, well, no, this is this this is even dated the the, the one that's coming up now. It's uh, they they didn't meet today. They didn't. Uh, they said they they're not going to get back right. together. And they were supposed Mon- to meet Monday and... at least. Right, uh, right. So from what I understand, um, that last it's attorney, possibly... that, yeah, that last attorney that testified just devastated the whole case. He just uh, he just Costello, uh, and it's, Costello, you know, so, yeah. who's going to be in uh, jail first? Yeah, you know, a little Abbott and Costello thing. Yeah, Costello is a seasoned <laughs> attorney himself. I mean, I don't want to go into detail on this because then I feel like I'm just ripping off Andy McCarthy, which isn't the worst thing in the world to do. But um, the so he testified and he just ripped Michael Cohn to shreds. And Tr- and Cohn is the big witness against Trump. So. What Bragg was going to do, if you're following this at home, uh, you know, and you might want to chart this out. What Bragg was thinking of doing was bringing somebody on to uh, question, you know, what, you know, Costello was saying. Here's the thing. You can actually use a, a, a crook, a, a bad guy like Cone to prove a, a crime. But as Andy McCarthy has said, it's only good if you're tr- trying to prove a big crime. If you're trying to prove what, and this is a trifling crime, <laughs> it, it it it's like it a, it's like a resonate. rolling it's like a rolling well. stop. Yeah, I mean it's just it's. I mean the whole case is stupid. Even you know liberals think that it's ridiculous. They're trying to uh, get him on a campaign violate finance violation, which is that's a federal crime. So I don't even know how that is handled in in state court. But let's well, it's a, there's, that there's a, do that. this is, a, this is also, how I see it. There's a state uh, there's a state yeah. law about how you have to file a business expense, which which this was right. falsifying and business the, the, records. Yeah. Right. And the yeah. statute of limitations on that is only two years. So, I mean, he's off the hook uh, right. uh, for that. However, on a misdemeanor, a, but on the felony. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So so they're making it. They're saying because right. it's a federal felony, the state statute of right. limitations the the extended one which is just yeah oh my gosh <laughs> i mean it's, it's such a stretch i mean it, it's just uh, I mean, just bring out know, the they, scale they, and they, see if he weighs as theoretic- much as a, as a duck at this point <laughs> right i mean the thing is you know they supposedly have so much on trump and yet they can never get anything solid and and this is ridiculous now it's interesting because, you know, I listen to the commentary podcast all the time and they're neocons and I consider myself very neoconish. But it was almost like wishful thinking on their part that. You know, if Trump has to have the perp walk, which I would love to see, I mean, it was that would be so theatrical it'd be terrific. But, you know, I'm kind of perverse. Sure. If, if he had to go through that, you know, a lot of people who normally would have you know, might have been inclined to vote for Trump are going to shrug their shoulders and say, look, we can't take any more of this, even though he's not responsible for this particular thing. He just brings a lot of this on himself and and they just and, and he won't be electable that way. So it'll be death by a thousand cuts. But I mean, for me, even though I really don't want to vote for him, I want to vote for DeSantis. This is the kind of thing that'll get me angry. <laughs> 
<laughs> and say, oh, no, you know what? We're going to we're going to shove it up your hanky <laughs> here. And uh, I mean, the idea and, you know, Trump would. It, here's another thing. I have heard that Trump really, you know, for all his bravado, you know, because he's a germaphobe and everything like that. He doesn't want to actually be in a prison cell <laughs> and uh, he doesn't like the idea well, of being well, not, arrested. But, so not he many can't people go through the I, charade. I, I, I think there's not many people that do want to be in a prison cell. I mean, there's a, there's a few weirdos who fetishize it. But <laughs> yeah, aside from yeah, that, I get it. Well, but you didn't think that Trump is crazy enough that he would not want to you know, that he want to be in. Anyway, the real important question, of course, is should I go with the uh, and this is all about Stormy Daniels. Should I go with a parody of the classics for Stormy? Here we go. Oh, Stormy. Oh, Stormy. Give back that huge payday. Or, <laughs> and aren't you lucky that I didn't do more than one line? I have learned about parodies. Do one line. People don't want any more. It's like in, if you ever go to karaoke, don't sing Stairway to Heaven, the whole thing. Do like a minute or so. You know, you wear out your welcome. All right. The other one would be Stormy Weather. Don't know why the Donald got between your thighs, Stormy Daniels. I see. So you got a lot of choices there with your parodies. Um, you know, Trump reminds me a little bit of, uh, if you remember, Guys and Dolls, Big Julie from East Cicero, Illinois. 33 arrests, no convictions. <laughs> and uh, it, it's like they're, they're yeah. they, they always overstep their bounds. That's the great thing about him. He's bad enough, but they got to go too far on it. And that looks like what it, it, it's, it's happening now. I mean, wouldn't you be you wouldn't be surprised if they don't wind up indicting him at all. Right. No, it doesn't seem like it's going to happen at this point. They, they, uh, they here's I, yeah. I've got a legal question for you. What if he refused to turn himself in? He would have to be extradited, right? Because it's a state charge. Um, Now, there's a question. Uh, somebody asked that question already. You know, would DeSantis then be in a position where he would have to allow the expedition? And then, and then, and the, that's the whole election right there. Whether DeSantis did the extradition or not? That's, um, uh, no, that's a, yeah. That's so, a, that, that, so that's, that's a comedy right there. That uh, will he do it? It's like yeah. Uh, so speaking of speaking of Trump versus, that's one issue between Trump and DeSantis. Now, DeSantis did have an interview with um, Piers Morgan which is in the they're serializing in the New York Post. And he's starting to strike back against Trump because, as you know, Trump is basically accusing him of uh, 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 of uh, being a pedophile, you know, whatever. Trump will do anything. And um, and DeSantis you know, actually, you know, finessed the whole thing about Stormy Daniels saying that he didn't know nothing about porn star hush money and he doesn't like Soros style prosecutors anyway. But um and he also and one very important thing was he said, look, I would have fired uh, Anthony Fauci. Trump celebrated Fauci. Now, never mind the fact that Trump apparently is anti-vax now because he could change on a dime. I mean, that's that's what's great about him. So but but DeSantis is fighting back right now. And I know you don't think DeSantis is necessarily electable because he's too short and doesn't have the charisma. But uh I mean, do you like this move by DeSantis? It's uh, it 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 is it is interesting. I uh, I I, I have another issue is uh, uh the uh, Costello's sure. testimony is uh he said that okay. six hundred pages of exculpatory evidence was uh was hidden that he that he produced six hundred pages and uh, it yeah. just kind of well that's the reason that Mar yeah that's the reason Mar marjorie taylor green wants to arrest alvin bragg okay and the thing is is that i am not sure i cuz I, I don't do criminal law i barely do civil okay <laughs> but the i don't think that in a grand jury proceeding the prosecutor has to remember you can indict a ham yeah. sandwich. No, right, right. You, the grand jury. You don't. You, you don't. That's that's for the regular case. That's for the actual case. You. Don't, I don't think you necessarily have to produce that and give that to the other side. So, uh, and I wouldn't rely on Marjorie Taylor Green much as I love her workout videos. Can we show that work? I mean, we should always have that like right there. We're <laughs> dropping the Marjorie Taylor Green workout video. Oh my God! I mean, you know, I. 
between her and uh, Molly Hemingway. Uh, yeah, I sure. OK, uh, not not but interested. I, but I found it so, interesting. I don't know yeah. if you saw Kennedy grilling a, judi uh, a judicial nominee on the uh, from the Senate. I I heard the story. He asked he, he what did he ask about the Brady motion? Is yeah, he, what, says, what's what a, he, he said he asked Which, the nominee what's a Brady motion. He goes, well, <laughs> it's never in my experience. It's never come before me. Well, because he's a federal magistrate. He's not yeah, a federal judge. So whatever. Maybe he doesn't. And thank you, Chris, for giving us a little Marjorie Taylor. Oh, my God. I can't look anymore. Oh, you know. Oh, oh my goodness. I mean, you know, no. I mean, she's. But it's but it's kind of it's kind of funny that he had no no idea. What All right. I'm is. getting nauseated right now. For those of you just listening, I guess I, I you know, I look. I'm I'm a Jew. I've got uh, lasers from space that I want to zap her with. Uh, you know that, that that's the problem. No, so yeah, right. I I don't think you necessarily have to. Well, yeah, the, yes. The, he the, said it has the, something uh, to do with handguns. That's what he said. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> yes. yes. Well, was that's the Brady Bill? That's close. And you know, if he had mentioned Greg Brady, uh, you know, it would have been the Brady Bunch. Uh, look, but uh, maybe magistrates don't deal with motions like that. I, I don't or know. or he, maybe he or or maybe Biden's appointees don't intend to uh, look, care about the Brady motions anymore. Maybe exculpatory <laughs> evidence is uh, is a relic of history. Well, wait a minute. You know, wait. I mean, if you're a Soros style prosecutor, uh, you know, believe in Soros style prosecutors, you're in favor of anything that helps the defense. So I, you know, just think that Biden is adulpated and he doesn't know who to nominate for the court. But, you know, the important thing is that we were having a minority nominated. Uh, you know, I hate those test questions. You know, next thing they're going to ask me what Marbury versus Madison stood for. Uh, OK. All right. All right. Can, we, can I try another one? Can I have three out of four? Um. Anyway, all right, when we come back, uh, we've got, uh, oh, so much stuff. The raccoon dog theory of COVID. Have you ever eaten raccoon dog? Oh, my. God. Mm, it's delicious. Uh, yeah, <laughs> wonderful. Bruce Wolf and Tim Slagle on the weekly wrap. The East Asian raccoon dog, a relative of the fox, may hold the key to the origins of COVID-19, according to a group of scientists quoted in the Atlantic magazine. The team says their new analysis of samples taken at a Wuhan market in the early days of the pandemic is a really strong indication that infected animals were there, including raccoon dogs. The findings support the theory that COVID-19 jumped from animals to humans. The researchers say it is not a smoking gun. Bruce Wolf, Tim Slagle on the weekly wrap so uh wrap uh so as um uh, promised we're going to talk about that raccoon dog theory of covid which actually happened so many days ago i think we i think it's spoiled i think raccoon dog keeps for only like two or three <laughs> days in the refrigerator uh but this was you know well, i i know that i know that uh uh you know, a week later if you're actually serving raccoon yeah um a week later it tastes just as good <laughs> So you know, this is they're, they're, they're trying I didn't even to push. know there was I didn't even know there was a such thing as a raccoon dog. That um, is a, that is don't a... tell them they 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 you know, they have uh, <laughs> identity complex on this. So, you know what? Somebody was suggesting it's just as possible that a human gave it to the raccoon as that the raccoon gave it to uh, a human that and and this is all specious. Uh, it, it's just a way of trying to uh, to to get at the lab leak theory, because, you sure. know, at all costs, we don't want it to be the Chinese who did it in a, in a lab. Uh, does anybody <laughs> does anybody not think it's a it was in a, a from a lab? I think I think that's pretty much universal now, isn't it? I well, I don't know. See, I get all my information from TikTok. So, uh, <laughs> you know, and they're telling me when, you know, when they're not telling me that, uh you know, I should watch uh, 15 year old strippers or whatever they show uh, that's, you know, it killing like our nation. on there, youth. actually. Huh? What? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> A little too old. So anyway. Um, yeah, this does not it, make uh, it looks this, like a raccoon. It's a dog and it looks like a raccoon. I thought the picture you showed me uh, right there was an actual raccoon. No, it's, it's a, a dog. raccoon dog. Isn't that weird? Isn't that weird? It's a completely different yeah. species, but it, 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 they they got uh -huh. the same makeup. Uh -huh. And they actually they actually yeah. they can yeah, actually they... climb trees. It's a dog that can actually climb trees. 
Wow, that would what an advantage to get to the cats. <laughs> I mean, that would really be so helpful, so helpful. Anyway, so let's turn uh, to the uh, former uh, world's greatest newspaper, the Chicago Tribune. I knew days ago, maybe I'm wrong about this, but there was a story they had with a headline, and it was about uh, Madigan and Cullerton and how they had a riff, R-I-F-F. I didn't know that they were like a jazz duo or something. I, I thought that it was, I thought it was a rift, but maybe I'm wrong. I mean, is it rift or rift? So I think a rift um, can be a riff. Anyway, it's not a raft. A, a rift, you know. So, that, yeah, and maybe there's just a bunch of riff raff that are running the tribune. No, I'm, I'm not. I'm not really sure. Anyway, um, speak of the devil. Was that actually was that and actually that was the headline. Tribune article? Like a, was that actually the Tribune article that uh... that's the actual Tribune article we just oh. showed a second ago? And and there's like it's like a 30. You know, you hate to make it a looks like they it, it looks like they corrected it, though. Yeah. Oh, they changed it to Rift. Yeah, oh. it looks like they got your well, tweet. I, but I'd have to look at it again. Yeah, they originally like they had Rift. OK, yeah, it looks right. like looks like they. So there we it. go. So anyway, so today the Tribune, you know, the Tribune is trying to um the, the Chicago Tribune Guild is trying to get the, their masters to hire more uh, minorities in the newsroom. And uh, they had a, a, a tweet today that said diversity matters in newsrooms, but Alden Global Capital and its attorney, Marshall Anstindig, won't make it a priority. We're working to bargain a contract that fosters diversity, but they have fought hard to block and stall on many efforts we've made to make our newsroom better. So I responded to that troll that I am and said, and you thought the trip was woke when it jettisoned John Cass, apparently not woke enough. Well, you know, 99,000 <laughs> times out of 99,001 times, I don't get a response from anybody, but the Tribune Guild responded to me. Okay. Oh, wow. Woohoo! It's a victory. So they said, sorry, Bruce. We weren't aware that it was, quote, woke, unquote, to want a newsroom in a major American city to resemble its populations so that they may tell stories properly and with greater insight. But clearly, you're the expert. Uh, so, you know, there's a riff or rift between me and the uh, and the Chicago Tribune Guild. So I responded to that, basically telling them, hey, um, I was actually giving you ammo against your bosses, Alden, because I said, I just think it's funny that Alden, which has turned the Tribune woke in its editorial stance, makes an exception for itself in employee relations, which, of course, is what liberals do, a variation on NIMBY, not in my backyard. Sure. As for whether you have to be from a certain ethnic group in order to tell a story, I guess when Shakespeare said, hath not a Jew eyes, he was just an anti-Semitic bastard who didn't know Shinola. So, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it's, you know, and I haven't heard from them since, so uh, I assume <laughs> that they've conceded the point there. But I mean, it is it is so funny. Um, you know, I, I I don't think there's anything. You know, sure, you should have minorities in there, too. But it would be nice if the threshold consideration was whether they can actually tell a story or not. And then um, my or friend, know Scott that there's Bertram, a, know that there's is, a like, T and the rift. <laughs> hey, I don't want to have to dot the I's and cross the F's for them. For But um, <laughs> Scott Bertram, who's uh friend of mine and uh, runs the radio station at Hillsdale College, also writes for National Review. Uh, some has that uh, political beats podcast uh, that's pretty popular. So he was following the Detroit Free Press, apparently every year announces, you know, how um, much progress they've made in diversity. And because <laughs> they're really, really, uh, they're really proud of that. But they said, I guess they said this year, that everything uh, they didn't say use the word stagnant. They used uh, that the, something to the effect that they it, the diversity numbers hadn't uh, gone up this year. And but in part, that was because they brought back a couple of uh, writers. I think one was named Neil Rubin or something like that. And and some other guy, both uh, white, one a Jew. I like we need another sure. Jew in the media. But that that's <laughs> tamping down. Uh, minorities. And, um, you know, I was thinking, you know, if you really want to get minorities into the newsroom, why don't you just pay them? Like, because obviously the reason you're not getting them is you're not paying them enough. You're not luring them, uh, pay them two to three times as much as you pay the white employees, call it reparations. I'm sure you're not going to incur any <laughs> enmity, uh, among the, 
liberal white people in the newsroom because they're all in favor of this for everybody else, but not for themselves. So um, anyway, how many, it's fun how, to, many how many uh, <laughs> how many people in Chicago don't speak English? Um, apparently the Tribune copy editors don't, but, you know, cause, cause, cause here's an interesting I, I, point. It's like, well, we want, we want our yeah. staff at the Tribune to reflect the population of the city. Well, okay. Well, that means you should have right. some people that only speak Ukrainian, some people that only speak Spanish, some people that only, sure. well, what's the deal yeah. with everybody, uh, uh, English speaking English. I agree. It I should I, reflect. I, the I, city, I totally right? agree with that. Oh, all right. All right. This is too heavy. Let's go to something <laughs> light here. Uh, so Rupert Murdoch, and uh, full disclaimer, I mean, he's responsible for my TV career. He created the Fox Network. I'm not talking about Fox, you know, the national news. I'm talking about, you know, all the local stations and, and with news. And uh, so, you know, I, and I got to work for that station for 18 and a half years. Um so, you know, I owe a lot to Rupert Murdoch. However, he's a horse's ass uh, with this. <laughs> what happened with the uh, with, with the uh, the lawsuit over the voting machines, uh, the libel suit. But anyway, he's 92 and he is engaged to Ann Leslie Smith, who is 66, less than a year after divorcing his fourth wife, Jerry Hall. Um, this would be akin to Leo DiCaprio dating a 22 year old which is three years older than the age of the girl he reportedly has been uh, seen recently with. Oh, look at me. I'm Bill Zwecker right now. Uh, but it's really <laughs> something when a 66 year old is robbing the cradle or the rocking chair, as the case may be. And, you know, and God bless Rupert Murdoch. I mean, I would hope that um, the marriage is coming pretty soon because I, d I don't think he's got a long runway uh, to, to uh, you oh, know, for I'm an sure, engagement. I'm sure that's, uh, right I'm sure that's what she's hoping. <laughs> I just, why would you get engaged at age 92? I mean, you think you're going to live forever? Uh, I, what, what is the point of that? I just don't, I don't see that Rupert, but he, I mean, he's, well, he's a I different think, breed. I, I think what it is, is that, is, is that when you look like that, in order to get people to sleep with you, there has to be some kind of a bonus. Sure. Sure. You got to, you got to, you got to pay, pay on the front end or the, the back end. It's, it's. <laughs> and if you want to get into the front yeah, end. Or sure. The... <laughs> okay. Anyway. Um, so speaking of having kids, uh, this is the price of success, Korean style. Um, Korea, the Korean government successfully achieved some of the fastest economic growth in human history. And the price has been that there isn't a next generation to inherit it, <laughs> which uh -huh. I, I love. I love the irony of that, um, you know, that that uh, they forgot about something. And, uh, you know, life is a little more, bit more complicated than even a Rubik's Cube. You really got to consider that that stuff that you're uh, working a little, little too hard and not <laughs> creating anybody to, to take over. Um, and, uh, you know, I, to that, I say, ha ha. Uh, so, so what is the real reason South Koreans aren't having babies? It's uh... Are they being made in Vietnam now? <laughs> Is <laughs> I don't I, I, you're you're probably right about that. I mean. Uh, and, and, you know, and one of the one of the problems is, is that, you know, real humans don't want to get together anymore. There's a story about this. Andrew McCarroll turned to an app that uses AI technology to create an avatar companion. But one day she started rejecting his advances. She wouldn't accept the pictures of his penis that he was sending and this is an ai you yeah. get rejected by an a <laughs> ai well, i mean well apparently apparently it's more intelligent than you think huh yeah i i i, I think so they're really going to take over they're really going to take over there so um, i think i think though if you take a picture of a soldering iron that might uh that might actually <laughs> the computer bruce might wolf actually... tim slagle and the weekly wrap Detectives believe a USB charging cord inside the car was used to start it. That charging cord is the key to swiping these types of cars, so police recommend removing it or at least hiding it. Now, just a couple months ago, the News 4 I-Team investigated the surging thefts of Kia and Hyundai vehicles. Bruce Wolf, Tim Slagle on the weekly wrap. Uh, did you see that there was an item just today? I'm recording on a certain day. I'm not going to tell you Thursday. Um that a guy had carjacked some car in Chicago, but got caught in Will County. 
So he got a 22 year sentence. See, I think, you know, if you get a 22 year sentence you know, throughout the United States, they could, you know, people could leave their doors unlocked here. <laughs> steal me. But that's, and you know, everybody blames Kia and Hyundai. There's this guy who does capital facts. I mean, he's a pretty smart guy. He reports on state government and everything. But he editorialized in a tweet and he said, we really need to they need to really fix this. Yeah, they do, because, you know, you got to blame the manufacturers. You don't blame the people who are stealing the cars. No, I blame it's, TikTok. It, there you go. Is, is, did TikTok actually teach people how to? Uh, yeah, that's steal? where that's where it came from. It was a TikTok video that showed people how to stick a USB cable into the ignition and start a car with it. So it's uh, and then that's that's what that's what set that off. So, you know, I'm, there you are go. You in there favor, you... Are you in favor of, uh, of abolishing Tic Tac? Um, you know, I don't know. I, I, yeah. I, I understand. I understand the concern. And yeah. uh, but it's it, it's it's so it'd be so difficult at this point, I think, to get rid of it. But uh, I think I, I, I think, think Trump had the right idea when he when he tried to ban it. And uh, Biden reversed them. And now it's uh, well, now, and now you've got these. You know, there are some Cong Was there a congressman? I forgot. You know, is his name Johnson or something? He was saying, oh, you, you know, they're in favor of TikTok. I mean, for, they're they're poisoning our youth for one thing. But they're also you can't be a government employee and have TikTok. I mean, why don't yeah. you just invite them in? Yeah, no, uh, especially just, on especially on a especially on a government phone. And it's uh, from what I understand, yeah. it's what they what they look at. They they, they say, ah, oh, we're just gonna we won't look at anything unless you give us permission. And it's like they go all through your phone. And I've heard that right. once you download it, it's it, you can't get rid of it. Oh, really? I think I downloaded it and tried to get rid of it. Um, and so so now, all right. Well, you know what? What kind of secrets well, do I have? Uh, you know, they could yeah. blackmail me. Uh, you know, I, I, I voted for a Democrat in 1972. It was Ed Hanrahan. Okay. Uh, and I was probably wrong in voting for him. Um, here's a, a little s story I want to throw in here. You see where these Chicago Blackhawks are not going to be wearing these. I, I don't know if there's their pride jerseys. I wanted to say they're pink. Uh, they might be a part, partly. No, pink they're probably rainbow. 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 Yeah. Um, pride jerseys. National Hockey League teams have been wearing them uh during their warm-ups not during the game itself to you know show that they support uh pride and the blackhawks aren't going to do it and i thought geez how could they not do this especially in light of if you remember there was this incident uh, with kyle beach one of their players who was molested assaulted by one of their coaches and really i mean it wound up uh costing uh john mcdonough the f former president of the blackhawks his reputation um so you'd think that they'd be sensitive about that and uh, they're not they're but their their excuses is that they've got russian players and and russia is very anti-gay and they fear uh repercussions for um for russian players i don't know about that that's <laughs> so, uh, that is that is that is really curious that if you know that if if we were to if we were to say you know well i don't i don't want to see i don't want to see a hockey team wearing no pride jersey you're going to yeah, be considered yeah. ignorant and right, uh, right. looked down but upon but we, the, yeah but when it's a russian saying well it is it is in my country <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pride wears you exactly uh, uh, but yeah. it, 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 because of, because it's we have to be sensitive to their culture. It's like now it's okay. Well, I don't know how much we're trying to be. We're just we're they're they're worried about the repercussions to the Russians. I I don't know. Maybe maybe there is also sensitivity. I mean, imagine asking a Muslim hockey player uh, to, to wear the pride uh, jersey. Well, well, are they still Russian or they live in Chicago now? I mean, well, that's what it, look, I are know. They the worried, Tribune, are, are they worried? The Tribune that has a gonna... Russian edition. Yeah. Are, are they worried they're going to be sharing a, a, a cell with Brittany Griner when the, when they get back to Russia? The Soviet, <laughs> Russia? I don't know. I, I, I don't I, I don't understand. It's because they're Russians. We're not going to make them wear pride jerseys. Yeah. It makes no sense. Now, did you me. see that jersey there? It was Jonathan Taves's jersey. Looks very nice in the rainbow uh, colors. Mm -hmm. But um, what's next to that? There's an Indian head logo. <laughs> How can they still wear an Indian head logo? 
it keeps reinforcing stereotypes of Native <laughs> Americans pulling their jerseys or sweaters over each other's heads and pounding the crap out of each other. <laughs> I mean, you know, how do they even wear that Indian head logo anymore? Talk about lack of sensitivity. Uh, just 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 terrible. So um, should we talk a little bit more about China? You know, I consider myself an expert on everything as well as you know, you are, too. So Nikki Haley had an op ed, I think it was in the Wall Street Journal, just to, uh, you know, counter uh, to uh, the NATCON saying, hey, hey uh, China and Russia are kind of in cahoots right now. I think uh, Xi has met with Putin around 39 times. They've got that Gazprom uh, deal. I always think, do you have to wear a tuxedo to Gazprom? But it's like it's, you know, like billions of <laughs> dollars limo. for the Russian gas. And um, you know, if we don't strike while well, the iron is hot here in Ukraine and give them the F-16s and maybe a few more tanks, uh, they're go- going to uh, th- this. This is this works perfectly for for China uh, that uh, that we're going to have this thing go on forever. Now, on the other hand, you get you know, cons- uh, isolationist conservatives. Well, maybe he's not quite an isolationist like Michael Brendan Doherty saying, oh, China would like nothing more than for us to get even further mired uh, in 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 dealing with Ukraine, because then they'll take their eye off the ball, you know, off of TikTok and 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 uh, and Taiwan as well. But, you know, maybe there's this window right now. And I know you're you've played risk and in Monopoly and in other games and paintball, probably. So I'm sure that you're an expert on uh, military maneuvers and and strategy. And you would have fired uh, McClellan and brought on Grant, I'm sure, in the the Civil War. So, you know, maybe we could actually win this thing right now and then turn our attention to China, because basically the war with China is going on right now. In Ukraine, no. Uh, you're saying you're saying that China is going to be going, going to be sending troops into Ukraine? I, I, not, I'm not troops. Sure. They're supporting the Ruskies. So, uh, so, so you think they're going to? It's China. I, I, I mean, they can, they can. iPhone, iPhone comes out with the iPhone 14, and China has knockoffs within a month. I mean, they are so they are so capable of manufacturing at such a quick pace. I don't I don't think that their resources are going to uh, be taxed any by uh, contributing to Ukraine. I, well, I, oh, well, let me try and think this through here. Uh, you know, can I get back to you in 28 days? Sure. Uh, the, sure. The, circle no, back. I, circle I, back. No, but here's the thing. Maybe. Maybe now we could actually take care of the Ukraine problem, deal with that so that we can turn our attention to China. But other, otherwise, you know, we're, the Russians are, are, are could win and they could win through attrition because it reminds me a little bit of uh, what the North Vietnamese did. Remember, uh, West Berlin's strategy was... Um, Oh, look at the look at the totals every week. We're killing like 50 to every one of uh, ours that are going. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. They they're going to just send more and more and more. And the Russians have this human fodder that uh, Ukraine can't keep up with. But maybe right now is the moment to do it. Yeah. Possibility. What would we do? What what would we do? We we, uh, uh, take those take those. uh, Oh, so. Go to war with Russia and Send China in you in Ukraine. That's your basically. That's what it comes down to. Yeah, okay. I mean, we got to fight it somewhere, right? Sure. And and maybe that will deter them a little a little because they're watching to see what we do there. And if we and if we just let this thing go on and on forever, you know, they'll probably take over Taiwan and we kind of need Taiwan's microchips. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Know, yeah. So. No, no, I, uh, no, I, I think, I, I think we, uh, was far too little, far too late. Uh, and at this point, at this point, I, I have no faith. I have no faith in, uh, in Biden to do anything. I mean, uh, look at, well, that's look the problem. I mean, he dawdles, he dawdles. He doesn't really know what to do. Um, well, he also yeah. he also, you know, he's also in the back pocket of uh, uh, Ukraine and China. So it's, it's, 
So who's well, who's who's the bigger? You know, I he ain't going to get any money. Hunter's not going to get any money from Ukraine for a long while. So at okay. this point, at this point, well, uh, they're going to have to rely on China. You know, for yeah. for their money. The big guy will have to yep. rely on that. Um, in any event, uh, uh did uh, you see? Go. I'm sorry. Did you... Otherwise, otherwise, you know, uh, uh, Hunter's going to have to do something like maybe uh, get into sculpting. Or... <laughs> uh, so, um, did you see that Nature magazine, which is a scientific journal, supported yep. Biden for president, and it backfired on them <laughs> because the readers didn't really like that being done, and um, they kind oh, no. of. They kind of torch their own credibility by doing that, uh, which is yeah. kind of fun. It's it, it's nice. Now, I think, I mean, well, the, the science was part of uh, by the Biden administration. So it, it, you can't, <laughs> right. refute, can't refute the science. I, I don't think the readers of nature are very scientific. I mean, just because somebody uh, the magazine supports uh, a candidate uh, doesn't mean that their other research is uh corrupt but i can understand the readers uh no. turning no, it against means the scientific confess consensus is that biden would be a better president <laughs> the, no, no question about it the consensus according to dr fauci absolutely bruce wolf tim slago on the weekly wrap Bruce Wolf, Tim Slagle on the weekly wrap. Tim, were you a fan of 24? I I was. I think I watched the whole thing. I uh, yeah. start to start to finish. Yeah. So that took you like four days, right? <laughs> so uh, no, the um, so I, you know, I actually I actually have a Kiefer Sutherland story. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, oh. yeah. Yeah. Well, it's not like I met him in person, but it was a satellite interview I did on the Fox morning show because uh, we were promoting the season two finale, which was, you know, on our network. So I say to uh, Kiefer Sutherland, hey, it's been a tough day for Jack. He's been shot three times, become addicted to drugs, rescued Rapunzel, you know, everything. Sure. And he he responded, Jack's a multitasker, which I thought was funny. <laughs> and uh, you know, it was great. It, 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 it was really a great moment for me. And um, so we used to watch the show. My wife and I and one of my sons would watch the show religiously every Monday. And it, it was the show that actually triggered us into uh, getting closed caption because we could not understand at least 25 percent of what Kiefer Sutherland, oh, wow. Kiefer Sutherland was saying. He mumbles so much. Huh. And there was one time where he said something that we thought he was saying barf baller. We replayed it 10, 20 times, and that's all we could hear. <laughs> it never. So, I mean, you didn't I put assume it, you're a cl you didn't put on the captioning. And uh, at, uh, at that point, at that point, I don't think we even had it. Oh, it was, it was there. It was there. You just that. didn't know how to turn it on or, or you know, which, 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 which kind even... of surprises me, Bruce, that you wouldn't know how to <laughs> turn something. Wait on. a minute. I don't even think I had HD TV back then. When was this? Like 2002? It doesn't no. matter. They've, TVs have done closed captioning for at least 40 years now. Well, you know, at, at that point, closed captioning to me would have been a concession to age. And, <laughs> uh, and now I've told, you know, you know, now basically, you know, I, I, I right. I have to have gigantic closed captioning to cover up their faces. But um, yeah, so we, we never understood it. But uh, so, you know, it's pretty cool, isn't it, that I got to talk, talk to Kiefer Sutherland like yeah, that, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Who's the that's... most famous person you've ever gotten to talk to? I don't Tim? know. I, I, I don't uh, I, I do comedy. So, so I mean, I, you know, I, I, uh, uh, I started with Tim Allen. Uh, how about well, that? Well, that's pretty good. That's yeah, pretty good. What's I don't think it's a Kiefer Sutherland, but it's pretty good. Really? Really? That's cool. You know, you know, maybe it's even better than I don't think. Kiefer, I, don't think I don't think Kiefer Sutherland was ever uh, was ever Santa Claus. Oh, oh OK. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I, I think Kiefer, I think Tim Allen working with Tim Allen trumps Kiefer Sutherland. 
me doing a satellite interview. I with saw him. him. I started with him. I, I I started with him before he went away, and uh, wow, uh, and, and then saw him skyrocket after he came out. How, so, and the, the, how did that make you feel that he skyrocketed? Were, were you happy? Uh, sure. But, but you, you know, you see people, you see, see people go become famous. You don't really, you don't really say, oh, oh, here I am still. It's uh, you kind of, you just kind of, well, that's what exactly is for, for your phone call. That, I, I mean, that's all it is. Exactly what I do. Yeah. Oh, no, no, yeah, no, you, no, Tim. That's exactly what I do. I say here still, I am. See, there we go. There we go. Is that Tim Allen or the, keepers the, the, the fairy? The, yeah. So the, the, the fairy of fame just hasn't um, tapped me with her wand yet. That's all. Oh, well, you know, just stick with me and <laughs> our little garage band here. You know, we we right, we got a garage band. And it's interesting because last week, so, you know, I did this anti, you know, Tucker rant last week. And Chris, our passive aggressive producer, said, uh, oh, well, that's, uh, you know, you're channeling Rachel Maddow now. And then there's somebody commented on YouTube when they saw it. You know, I love Bruce. He's a genius. Thank you. But, uh, you know, I'm getting sick of him and everything because he attacks conservatives all the time. And, you know, I get a combination of angry over it, but also sensitive. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, you know, Tucker makes my blood boil. I want to talk about that. But, you know, but here we are having this intramural dispute over this. And, you know, I, I, I'm Democratic small D. I mean, I'm willing to entertain the notion that I should not, you know, attack anybody in our broad tent called conservatism, even though, you know, I, I usually I like to alienate as many people as possible. Uh, you know, so what 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 did that bother you? Did you think that, you know, matter of principle, I shouldn't have attacked Tucker Carlson? Did you even give it one second thought? Well, I didn't I care much so. for your attacks of Dan Prof. That's uh Dan Proft has always been. Oh, there Dan you Proft go. has always right, been good there to you me. Go. He always he'll put me on his show anytime. Yeah, I, I ask know. Until until I started doing and this I show. I think. <laughs> you know, so I think you got to weigh whether you should be on Dan's this show or Dan's show. And you know, I would totally understand it. I would be hurt, if, you know, because look, I lost out on the AM five sixty morning show job to Dan. I even lost out on the afternoon show. <laughs> Thank you, Ronald Reagan. Thou shalt not speak ill of thy fellow Republican. Uh, the 11th commandment. The um, I lost out the afternoon show to um, Sean Thompson, who was a listener of, of mine, who I actually <laughs> helped get. So I lost out to him. He, he feels so bad for me that he calls me every once in a while, you know, to see how I'm doing in the old folks home. <laughs> so, um, but I, I got to tell you, here's the thing. I'm actually heartened by what I believe is there's a rebuttable presumption that Dan is, has sold out because he won't attack C Tucker Carlson. Uh, and I mean, the guy just makes up stuff. Tucker. Well, but why? And, uh, but yeah. why, why? Why? I mean, there's so much there's so much ammo on the other side. Why, there you why, go. Why? Why, why do go. we why do we shoot it ourselves? Because why do, they, they I, never the other side never does that. Have you noticed? See, they see, never that, see, do that because I stand for truth. I don't mm -hmm. care which way it falls, except, of course, I can be bought. There's no question about it. <laughs> Look there. There's Dan and me. There you and go. I'm probably like two inches shorter than that now because, you know, you start shrinking in your old age i you know i uh but anyway so um speaking of shrinking did you happen yeah. to see those pictures of kareen john pierre with uh with the ted lasso cast yeah yeah um so i had she, to look it up it said that she's five it said in her bio that uh, online that she's five feet five inches tall there's there's no way <laughs> right there's That's no way because like, hollywood people are short to begin with Right. And they're 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 all at least a, a at least a foot taller than her, maybe a little bit. And that and that's with the hair. Yeah. Well, that's that's like um, I, I used to do a show on Channel 32. You know, everything. Notice it's I used to do. I used to do so. Um, <laughs> but every week there was a joke. We did a joke about Mayor Daly, who claimed to be five feet nine. And I would say five nine Mike Keister. No way. I mean, it was like, and I once even was interviewing. I I was actually interviewing Jane Byrne. She was on our set, and I said, 
Uh, you know, they keep telling me City Hall keeps saying that Mayor Daly is five feet nine. Hey, you stood next to him. How tall is he? Oh, about five two. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lady Jane. She was she was terrific. Uh, so that Ted uh, Lasso thing you showed. First off, I guess there was a kerfuffle for that um, because there's a reporter there who hasn't been able to get a question in of Jean Pierre for uh, like seven months and was complaining about it and actually dominated the press conference with Ted Lasso before Ted, you know, uh, Jason Sudeikis got to stand up at the podium. So there was that matter. But um, I don't know if you have a comment on that, but have you seen, do you, do you watch Ted Lasso? Uh, I, I heard the third. I do not. <laughs> I okay. Do not. I, I heard the third season was not all that good, but I've watched two episodes and, you know, I thought it was funny. You know, well, so you've been I, a big, you've been a big Tad Lass, Ted Lasso fan from the, since the beginning of this show. You've been telling me yeah, that you need to no, watch it. Jason Sudeik has made a joke at what, some point where he says he, you know, he just looks like a Ned Flanders uh, wannabe <laughs> or something, which I mean, it's pretty, <laughs> it's, I mean, look, all these shows jump the shark to a certain extent because they're, they get to be repetitious, but, um, well, what happens is what, what what I think happens is is when a show is like a big hit, uh, you know, out of nowhere, all these writers and uh, directors and uh, that, that that pretty much have been unheard of are all of a sudden in high demand. Oh, there and you I go. think I think what happens is after the first season, I think all the talent for the that made that show so delightful is gutted completely. Oh, all right. And then by the third season, you've got you've got the actors wanting to direct their episodes. <laughs> yeah. And that's that's what I mean. That's what it all goes to hell. Me not having any great taste, you know. Oh, it's still funny. I, I enjoy it. So let's close on this. Apparently, Hillary and Chelsea Clinton were at a uh, Broadway <laughs> show. Some like it hot, which you know I love the movie, but they were putting it on Broadway and some somebody, like it hot and steaming. Well, that's wait a minute. That's what I said. <laughs> Now, oh, sorry. Well, we're on the third season of our show. So, you know, all right, here we go. <laughs> so, yeah, that's exactly what I had tweeted. I'm almost <laughs> as good as Tim Slagle. Not as good as Tim <laughs> Allen, but as good as Tim Slagle. So anyway, um, but the poop may have been an accident. We don't really know for sure. Um, it, it could have been an old person doing it, but it seems like it, it could know, have been Hillary. And yeah, right. <laughs> Could she have could been. have just she could have just shaken it, shaken it out of the yeah. pantsuit leg. There. Yeah, anyway, to quote the final line from some like it hot, you know, as far as, you know, whoever did this, nobody's perfect. And that was, of course, stated by who? Joe uh, e. Joey Brown. Brown. Brown, my friend. OK, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's end on a high note. Hey. Jason Sudeikis, you can use that one. Work that in to your uh, self-effacing uh, conversations with the owner of the of of, of your team. So, um, yeah, I, are you what? Quickly here, tell, give me a recommendation. Anything on TV I should be watching other than I'm watching Jean-Pierre? Peaky. But I'm watching Peaky Blinders. I, I We've missed seen that the, the first thing. time around. Did you? Yeah, yeah, no, it's great, and I think there's going to be even one more season. I I don't yeah. want to give it away. It's wonderfully violent and. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's very enjoyable. How could you have the razor blades in your hat like that? That seems to me <laughs> I, I would buy, I would have cuts all over my fingers. After I learned one how day. to do all that stuff from Odd Job and James Bond. How to how to <laughs> deal with a hand. Bruce Wolf, Tim Slagle on the weekly wrap. And that's the weekly wrap on radio and television. Follow Bruce at Bruce Wolf Shy on Twitter and Tim at TimSlagle.com. The weekly wrap with Bruce Wolf, a CP Pods production.